Hi there, and welcome to Techopia. Thank you very much for joining us today. Today, we are stepping into something that is once again been a, a journey for our guest, uh, but certainly something that has been missing for quite some time, something that we all know that was coming. And here we are celebrating the success of SmartCone. With me here, I have the president and founder of SmartCone, Jason Lee. Thank you so much for joining me today. Now, Jason, um, before we get into how this all came to fruition, let's just explain to our viewers what the SmartCone is. Uh, first of all, thanks for the introduction and thanks for having me here. The uh, SmartCone is a uh, deployable edge-based sensor device that collects sensor data, provides predictive software, and then provides alarms to people to keep them safe. An example would be bike lane safety, where we detect cyclists as they're heading towards an intersection. And as they get close to the intersection, we provide lights to the drivers to let them know, hey, check out the intersection before you enter so you don't cause an accident. And there's other examples of providing safety for utility companies and so on and so forth. So basically, we just use any number of sensors. We're sensor agnostic to collect, process the data, and provide uh, safety warnings to people locally. And then we also have a link up to the cloud. So uh, for example, IBM Watson IoT, which is one of our partners, would take the data and then be able to give that information to the safety managers for uh, planning for how to, to make routes safer or to you know reposition signs and those kinds of things. That's basically what we do. No, <laughs> no, I, like, I like the fact that you're like, you know, I managed to kind of put this all together in like, you know, almost a minute. But I know, you know, just from our discussion prior to this, that this has been a phenomenal process for you. And this is, it's so wonderful because it's really uh, just a sum of a variety of little things that's been in place and, and just experience over the years and everything that's got you to this point. So maybe you could share with us a little bit of that journey and how it got you to, hey, you know what, we can take this further. We can use this to you know, where it is now used, being used to uh, notify first responders and construction, uh, construction crews and cyclists. Share us with us a little bit of that journey. Sure. Um, so I've, I've had the ple pleasure of traveling everywhere from Russia, well, like Siberia, and, uh, more specifically down to Bolivia and around the Middle East. And, and every project that I've been involved in has had some level of security and tracking and communications in it. And <clears throat> during that 10-year journey, the one thing that really stuck out for me everywhere was there wasn't enough help to keep people safe. And uh, cell phones were around though, so I knew the sensors were there. This is back in 2010 timeframe. So uh, I decided to take and, and design a deployable safety product that was easy to use that, that somebody like me could use to become more safe in an environment. And uh, all the customers I dealt with all wanted the same thing and we just put it together. And uh, we had our first version before IoT really you know, became popularized. And, um, but it was the same journey. And back in 2010 and 11 and 12, products weren't miniaturized yet. So it was a lot of effort went into making a small to fit in a tube. Yeah. And th the reason we put it in a, in a three inch tube, by the way, was uh, because anywhere in the world you can find a three inch pipe. And so that gave our customers the ability to, to be able to mount it in a different area or mount it on a vehicle. So we wanted to give the freedom to people to do that. And so trying to find technology that fits into a three inch tube before 2015 was a big, big uh, project. And, uh, and so when IoT came out and things started getting smaller, it was like just made it easier for us to get there faster. Wow. Um, <laughs> and I think I wanted to kind of shed a light on that because I think it's interesting how, how you experience and how you've been kind of simmering this concept and idea up to this specific point. Now maybe you can share with us a little bit. Um, uh, SmartCone now is definitely, you know, it's out there, people are aware of it, uh, you've got some awards for it as well, um, you're, you've raised some money for it as well. I mean, what's, what's the next step, what's the, the applications? I mean, clearly there's so many applications out there, there's so much data uh, that's being shared and also you're informing both the first responders and, and sharing specific aspects with regards to busy streets and lights and you keep that data and you move all those things. So let's, let's hear a little bit first, what, what's, what's kind of the next steps for you? Where would you like to go? What is part of your growth plan? Okay, so it, it is a, <laughs> to think about talking about it, it's a really big idea in a, in a big undertaking. And you know, that's really hard for anybody to do. Um, so we had to scale that, we had to look for the common components of that vision. And so that meant that what we wanted to focus on was a hardware platform, which is this, has cellular connectivity, satellite ready, LoRa, Wi-Fi, all the communication components it would take to support 
today's uh, world. So that's all in here. And then we have a software platform that we that uh, is like a store platform for plugins and things like that. And that's what we focus on. Integrating sensors, having a software platform, and having a communications component. We knew that that all the big clients that were going to use this, this product all have their own sensor suite. IBM's out there, Microsoft, other big data companies are out there. So we didn't want to tackle that. But those companies that do those vertical uh, data, big data projects, they'll use the smart cone. Some of them are using the smart cone now. And they take on different applications. All we have to worry about is the common platform. So by doing that and not preventing these big companies, or I guess a better way to say that is inviting these big companies to run with it and make it their own has been the secret to our success so far. So we just focus on collecting data, communicating it, and keeping everything in the, little, in the little tube, easy to deploy. So it took that big vision and made it simple for us to focus on. So as you are, you know, we look at this and we think connectivity and what's the next word that associates with connectivity at smart city. Um, we talk about this more and more within our city in general, and uh, it's become such a buzz term. But how does how does the smart cone? How does this technology? How does the IoT um, tie into all this? So the uh, the one software we do, we do focus on is making our smart cone smart, <laughs> <laughs> or it would just be a cone. So now, but we do make it smart, and so we actually have um, uh, near miss detection. And that near miss detection requires collecting sensor data in, in real time and then being able to share that data around with all the different smart cones. And we develop something called a data meshing. So we don't care necessarily about wireless meshing per se, and that's one way to do it, but we care about where the data gets to and does it get there early enough. And so by doing that, we're able to start mapping how effective safety procedures are without having an accident. And that's something they call it the holy grail in the safety planning. And so that piece we focus on, and those are our own algorithms. And so from a smart city perspective, you could deploy smart cones throughout your smart city. They could map out the current activities, give you a, a, an understanding of how many close calls or near misses you would have in your city. And as the planners begin putting new measures in, maybe a new signal or maybe brighter lights or whatever it may be, we can track and map the difference it's making. And so then we're saving lives without having to have an accident. And that is, to us, is the, the foundation of what the smart city uh, component really is. And we have, um, we're starting an aut autonomous infrastructure component with our smart cone. And that we'll be adding that same thing to the vehicles as well so that we can add near miss detection from an infrastructure point of view, not just from the vehicle point of view. And that's wonderful because that is, that's something you can start doing now. Um, as you are planning for a smart city and as you are planning to implement autonomous vehicles. Because uh, that is, that's, that's, as you just said, that's where that key information lies to help us prepare for those cities moving forward. Uh, and <laughs> wow, it sounds fascinating. So if you're watching this today here on Techopia, we have the uh, president and founder of SmartCone, Jason Lee. Uh, thank you so much for sharing with us a little bit. Uh, surrounding this phenomenal company. Um, it's clear that we are going to just see more and more of these devices everywhere. And it's wonderful to see and know that it's already playing such a key role, even here in our city where it's, you know, we know it's Caribbean weather most of the time. Um, no, but it gets really cold and, and people get really distracted and it's, it's dangerous in many ways. And it's wonderful to know that this device is already changing changing uh, routines, changing perception, changing construction layouts. It's amazing to see that. So maybe I'll speak to that just one more time uh, as a last aspect. Um, when you started this company, did you, did you think of it always as, as just another technology or did you think of it, okay, here's a way for us to really change the way people, as you say, stay safe? And, and that clearly was something that was very important. Where you are now, are you where you want to be, or is this where is this gone a little? Has it gone further? Has it become broader than you've ever expected? Has the possibilities increased? Has it has it changed your perception from where it was maybe in two thousand and nine? Well, I think I'm about five percent through what I want this architecture to do. Uh, when we were first given the task of uh, protecting warfighters, uh, which is where the concept originally came from, um, the first thing I did, being in the field so much, was. Uh, what would, what would keep me safe? 
and that's what's been driving me. And we really care about safety. And I've been in multiple bad accidents where first responders have saved my life. And so there's a lot of emotional attachments to that. And I really care about the safety aspect. And that's what's driving it. We have a lot to do. I think we have a really good start. We've got six very large customers that are, that are feeding information into us uh, as an early adopter of the technology. And uh, we've got a lot more to do. And it's, it's just a lot of fun. And everybody involved in it is just awesome. I'm so grateful. Thank you very much, Jason, for joining us today. Thank you very much for those of you that's joined us here on Techopia. Make sure that you stay tuned. Make sure that you keep an eye on Smart Cone. Otherwise, they're going to keep an eye on you, you which is a good thing. Yeah, right. <laughs> this is a good thing. So thank you very much for joining us. Thank you so much, Jason. Thank you. Take care. <laughs>